Hi everyone, so in this video I'll be explaining how to use the EG160 resins, like using them as a mold system to create molds ready for pre-break while doing a wet lamination. So in this video I'll do the mold making and in the part 2 video there will be everything about using the X-break uh, system from EZ Composites to create like stunning pieces using pre-break. So first things first, I always use a chemical release agent just to be sure that the parts will remove at the end of, uh, of the molding because if you don't use a release agent, the part will be stuck onto your part. So that would be a pity to have something like this happening. <laughs> so I'm using the EG160. So the 160 means service temperature is still 160 degrees. So that's well above the temperatures of curing pre pricks in the out of autoclave system of course that are around 120 degrees so first things first while opening the can first make sure to mix everything into the can just to avoid having some unmixed uh, resin into the can so as you can see here the resin is very dexotropic so this is a gel coat it has a gray color and why I like a gray color on a mold is because it's easy to see while laminating molds like this or putting pre prick into them is that you can see all the voids that don't have the pre prick yet. So if you have a black mold, it would be more difficult to see. So I'm using um, 30, I think 30% of hardener here. You can see the details on the products lists below in the comments uh, and the description. And as you can see, it's very hard to mix at first um, stirring. So after a while, the resin will be mixed. I would advise you to mix for around two minutes just to be sure that you have everything mixed because if you have unmixed resin, it won't cure and it will leave some marks on your molds um, as sticky parts and so on. So that's things you don't want to have. So I'm brushing it on in thin layers first, just to be sure to cover everything. Try not to lift the, the brush that much because it will leave some um, air trapped in between the resin. Because it's so texotropic, it will also be difficult to have the bubbles popping to the surface. So that's maybe a minor thing about this system is that the gel coat is very texotropic that can leave some bubbles and you'll see later on in the video what I'm talking about. So after the first layer, you just want to go to a tacky stage and then you can apply the second coat. So the tacky stage is when you leave no, like a little mark, but without having to stick onto your glove. So um, that's when you know it's tacky and then you can just apply a second layer. Just to give you a reference, you will use around 600 grams um, of gel coats per square meter. So this like in two layers you can do half uh, a square meter with uh, this can of one kilogram of gel coat then it's time to use the uh, high temperature epoxy resin so why using a high temperature epoxy that's very important because you don't you cannot use the regular laminating epoxy because you will go to high temperatures and this epoxy resin is resistant as well to high temperatures so you need to keep like the entire system in one go you also have the mold making putty that can go to 160 degrees as well but that will be in a later video uh, while i'll use uh, that way to make the molds as well so you have two ways of making molds so the first thing i'm doing here is i'm applying a resin rich layer on top that will still fill like all the little cracks and voids that you might still have in your gel coat and then I'm using some chopped fiber um, carbon fiber just around the flanges where you have some tight corners to be sure that I have no bridging on these spots because while laminating with uh, carbon fiber cloth it's very possible to have like little voids on your tight edges that will snap off while demolding. So these are things you don't want to happen and that's why I'm using these chopped fibers around the flange first. So I'm using some scrap pieces I had left of the 650 carbon fiber. So this is just like for a mold so I don't care it being too resin rich but try not to have it too resin rich because it will cause, it might possibly cause problems with shrinkage and so on. So I'm using carbon fiber, you could also use fiberglass or Kevlar, but I'm using the carbon fiber because it will have like plus minus the same expansion rate as the um, 
pre brick carbon fiber that will go into it. So I'm using um, some little uh, flanges um, to uh, open the mold. So at first sight, I'm doing all the corners and then I go all the way around and at some point it will just pop off and then you'll see uh, the mold coming out of uh, your master plug or your master mold. And then you'll have the, the mold ready at first um, for pre brick So here is the, the molding. So the piece came out perfectly. And keep in mind, you will have the same finish on your mold as you had on your uh, master plug or master mold. So this is very important. Just maybe put some more time into your master mold sanding and um, applying some putty if needed to fill some cr um, some uh, little holes you still had. So here is what I'm talking about, some small little air bubbles, uh, but I don't care too much about that because these can be sanded off. Keep in mind that this is a very tough resin, so it's very hard to sand. So make it as perfect as possible um, while you will have to demold so you don't have too much sanding after that so after that you will still need to post cure your molds till high temperatures and that's very important because if you don't post post cure your molds um, the molds might deform under high temperatures while use in um, in a pre-break system because you will go to 120 degrees with the pre-break and that can cause problems on the surface and uh, deformation and so on. So I have a little book where I keep all my data for uh, curing. So I'm just using the oven from Easy Composites with the program that I programmed previously into the oven. So that's a big advantage to have because you don't have to mess around with the temperatures while doing the curing. So the oven has a computer that will go through all the cycles needed. So this is a very simple cycle. I go till 130 degrees with a ramp of uh, 0 0.1 degrees Celsius at each step. So the mold will go for around 16 hours into the oven and then it will be fully post cured in um, like I would say in a gentle way because the temperatures go up so slowly that it will post cure without deformation and uh, having a perfect finish. So after the finish you're able to sand and do some little retouches if you want to. Do not retouch the molds before post curing because while it post cures it might still have some marks uh, coming through. If you have too many air bubbles as well into your backing layers it might it might cause some problems with the air bubbles expanding under heat and creating some little craters into your gel coats or your surface. So avoid having little air bubbles in between your layers while doing the layup to have a good finish like we have here on the mold. Then I'm using some tape just to be able to have like a guide for the cutting. You can also do this with a ruler and a pen, but I like tape because it's fast and easy and it's like a, a good visual mark when I'll do the, the trimming. So what I'm using from now on is the full mask from 3M. Previously I, I used the half mask, but I just got problems with dust. Uh, stacking up upon the, the mask and under the glasses. So for me it's a big improvement to be safe and just to take care of your health as well because this is some nasty dust that comes out of carbon, f carbon fiber and, fi and uh, the epoxy resins. So I'm using an angle grind grinder for rough cuts now. Like in the past I was very scared to use this machinery but I'm pretty happy using this now because it's so much faster than using a Dremel and the um, permagrit rotary tool. But I'll still use it for smaller cuts and so on. So here's a second mold I did as well while doing um, these two shapes. It has some retouches from some air voids I had. Um, and here's a way how to cut like more difficult pieces. So I use a, a roll of tape under the bowl shape just to have some support. And then I'm just using the jigsaw with a permagrit uh, jigsaw blade that has some carbide uh, teething, I think, or uh, like it's close to diamond teething because it cuts very well. And then I'm just like, I want to have my molds as straight as possible. So I like to have straight edges because when you're using some tape around it, it will be much easier having straight edges onto your mold. That's why I'm using the sanding blocks from permagrit. And they have two sides. It's one is a, 
coarse um, abrasive and then the other one is finer so first I go to the coarse abrasive and then to the fine and then I just round the edges to be able like to be sure that it won't puncture the back while being into an envelope back and that's also the reason why I'm sanding the back in like normally it wouldn't be needed if you're just making molds and you have the flanges taped off but in an envelope back system I will always clean the surface like that so what you can expect from the second part I'll be going through all the pre-prec information about the new X X -prec, um components uh, pre-prec and go through all the steps and give you some extra advice how to get this amazing result so I hope you like this video and see you guys in the part two don't forget to like subscribe and share this video and see you guys in a later one thanks for watching